This is the iGame GeForce RTX 3060 Ultra W Overclock Edition from Colourful, and it is the newest, most affordable, and frankly weirdest RTX 30 series graphics card yet, with an insane 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM, which I've had the pleasure of testing for a week or so now. So let me show you what it can do, how well it handles VR, and crucially, how pretty Cyberpunk 2077 looks with it. Obviously a big thank you to Colourful for sending this ahead of the global release. Like most of you, I expect I've been unable to source or afford a 30 series card, and I've been struggling along on a GTX 1080 for a year or two now. Now with an RRP of around $330, hopefully these more affordable cards will open up the possibilities of RTX era gaming for the rest of us. Assuming they're not all snapped up by filthy scalper bots as soon as they go on sale. But at least with this generation, you won't have to worry about cryptocurrency miners. Because that's right, starting with the 3060 card, Nvidia will actually detect when it's being used to mine cryptocurrency and forcefully cripple the performance uh, by 50%, which is frankly the best news I've heard in a long time. It came hand in hand with an announcement from Nvidia about new cards which were specifically made for mining called the CMP range, but this does at least mean that there's one less evil entity vying for these gaming graphics cards. So let's talk some specs. The 3060 sits at the lowest end of the 30 series, but intriguingly, this generation is actually equipped with an enormous 12 gigabytes of RAM, more in fact than the 8 gigabytes you'll find on the 3070 or 3060 Ti, or even the 10 gigabytes that you'll find on the 3080. Hey! Compared to the already released 3060 Ti, you'll find 3584 CUDA cores versus 4864 and it also has a base clock speed of 1320 megahertz versus 1410 megahertz on the TI edition. So this is the colorful iGame Ultra W Overclocked Edition, which comes with an actual turbo button. Now, those of us who grew up with 486s will have fond memories of the turbo button that used to be on the front of PCs. In this case, the turbo button, once you reset, uh, loads up the factory overclocked settings, which in my experience added a couple of extra frames per second. Uh, you can read the full details in the article review. There's no apparent side effects to this, so you might as well just keep that on. In terms of card designs, it's an acquired taste, with a predominantly white frame, pink and blue accents on the underside, as well as red on yellow bands that kind of look like packing tape or warning tape. It measures 4.2 inches tall, 11 and 3 quarter inches deep, and 2 and a quarter inches thick. That said, I had no problem fitting it into this Corsair 500D case. It requires two standard 8-pin power plugs and draws up to 170 watts, so you should be good to go with a 550 or better PSU. While it does have a small glowing logo that you can just see covered up by the cabling, it certainly isn't going to be a highlight of your RGB case build. If you want some serious RGB on this, you'll need to add it yourself. As for ports, you'll find three full display ports and one HDMI. Equipped with a 192-bit memory bus, the 3060 is also the first 30 series card to feature what Nvidia is calling resizable bar, which when combined with a suitably equipped motherboard, a compatible CPU and a supported game, that's a lot of ifs of course, but if you have all of that, it lets all of that 12 gigabyte RAM be accessed at once by the host system, loading in resources as and when needed. Now others have found uh, around a 10% frame rate uplift in supported games. I can't test that because I don't have a compatible motherboard, but if and when I do, I'll be sure to update the written review with any frame rate improvements. Now for those of you like me who are upgrading from a 10 generation GTX card, uh, the two headline features are RTX Ray Tracing and DLSS. If you're upgrading from the first generation RTX board, the 20 series, you're not going to be blown away nearly as much by performance gains. They will be minimal and you've already had a taste of ray tracing as well as first gen DLSS. So testing puts the 3060 roughly in line with a 2070 Super. If you don't know what DLSS is, it stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it's a technology that can only be described as literal dark magic. It was first introduced in the RTX 20 series cards and uses 
Tensor Core artificial intelligence processing chips to boost frame rates by basically upscaling content. These dedicated AI processing chips were trained on tens of thousands of rendered sequences, so the neural networks were shown both a super high quality version and a lower quality version of the exact same rendered scene. And in doing so, they learnt what it is that they need to do to change this low resolution scene into the high quality one uh, without needing to re-render it. It's a bit like you seeing a tree with a couple of leaves on it, but then in your mind being able to imagine it in full foliage because you've seen trees before, you know what they should look like. It really allows you to push for higher graphical fidelity in games from the same amount of raw power. It's a real life version of enhance, enhance, enhance. And I, for one, am fascinated that this is the evolutionary route that graphics card have taken. Uh, rather than simply throwing even faster processes at it, NVIDIA has augmented the render pipeline with a digital form of imagination. And more importantly, as my testing showed, it's a massive performance boost that can seriously counter out the performance loss that you get by enabling ray tracing. All right, let's get on to performance testing. I ran all of these benchmarks against my baseline of the GTX 1080 because that's what I have on hand. Anything on 3D Mark and VR Mark was also submitted into the database of results. So if you go along and view those links, uh, you can see them alongside other cards there for context if you want. Now these were run on a Windows 10 machine with 16 gigabytes of RAM and crucially an i7 4 gigahertz CPU. You can find more benchmarks and all of my results in the written review. So this is just a quick summary. In 3D Mark Time Spy for DirectX 12 benchmarking, the GPU score with the uh, baseline GTX 1080 was 7,340, while the factory overclocked iGame 3060 achieved 8,771. So that's a 20% better score there, jumping from 1080 to 3060. The RTX feature test isn't something that can be run on the 1080, but for reference, it clocked a somewhat poor 19.33 frames per second. Same with the DLSS 2.0 feature test. It can't be run on the 1080, so I have nothing to compare to. But for those of you who want to compare to your own 30 series cards, I got 23.3 FPS without DLSS on uh, and 58 FPS with it on. Now for VR performance benchmarking, I used VR Mark, and it's here where I seem to hit a very serious bug affecting VR on many 30 series cards. As a baseline, my GTX 1080 scored 6,377 and averaged around 139 FPS on the Cyan Room test. Now swapping it out for the 3060 netted, wait for it, 2,750 with an average frames per second of 60. Now that's less than half the score of a card that is two generations old. There is obviously something very wrong here. And as far as I can tell, the bug was introduced last year sometime into the NVIDIA drivers and NVIDIA has yet to figure out exactly what it is that's wrong. Unfortunately, the current advice from VR users is to drop the driver back to many versions ago, but I can't do that because this is the first driver version that actually supports the 3060. However, I did try some of the other advice like disabling any game monitoring services like the Nvidia overlay, as well as Corsair IQ software. I still got the same results no matter how many times I tried. I also tried the more taxing VR Mark Blue Room uh, which is supposed to test readiness for the next generation of VR gaming. And the results were slightly better there with the 1080 getting 2,229, while the 3060 got 2,645. So 18% better, certainly more in line with what I'd expect. So what is it about the Cyan Room test? Honestly, I have no idea. I'm certainly not alone in my experience of bad VR performance though on the 30 series in general. It's a known issue for many users. I can't tell you how widespread it is on the 3060 specifically because at the time of review, uh, there's only around three other world ride uh, 3060 results, one of whom has a similar setup to mine and got similarly appalling results, but two of whom have i9 CPUs and managed to get great results. So it's possible there's something in there that's CPU bound, but there's just not enough data yet to figure out or recognize any patterns. For now though, VR users beware, hopefully a driver fix is on the way.
Next up, I turn to Cyberpunk 2077, which can make pretty extensive use of the ray tracing for a beautiful neon cityscape. And it is very taxing on the GPU anyway. So again, for context, I had been playing Cyberpunk happily at 1080p with ultra settings uh, on my GTX 1080 for a while now, and I'd managed to achieve sort of 50 frames a second on that, which for me was quite playable. If you think 50 frames a second isn't enough for you, then please adjust your interpretation of my opinions uh, appropriately. But anyway, my main objective was to see how far I could push Cyberpunk on this, how much better it would look using the 3060 compared to a 1080. For consistency, and because I had to record this tens of times, I used the same sequence to start testing in V's apartment and then just walking around outside the apartment and walking back again. Anytime I enabled ray tracing, it was at maximum settings and the DLSS profile I used was balanced, which is a mix between increasing performance and making the image prettier. So first at 1080p ultra settings, as I said, I was getting around 50 frames a second on the 1080. Swapping that out for the 3060 and keeping everything else the same uh, went up to 75 frames a second, a sort of 50% uh, really nice improvement. But of course, one of the selling points of the RTX 3060 is the ray tracing. Once I enabled that, uh, that pulled it down again to 30 frames a second. However, enabling DLSSS pulled that up to 58 frames a second. What was surprising to me was though that jumping from a GTX 1080 to an RTX 3060, I couldn't just enable ray tracing with everything else identical and get the same frame rates. I guess I personally underestimated how much computing power is needed for those RTX features, uh, as gorgeous as they are. Next, I upped the resolution to 1440p. And for reference, my old GTX 1080 got around 30 frames a second at this resolution. It was largely unplayable. Now I saw a similar uplift when swapping out for the 3060, about 50% better performance, uh, up to a more reasonable, but still a little bit iffy 44 frames a second. Enabling DLSS on that without RTX clocked in up to 78 frames a second. So if you want 1440p Cyberpunk, don't mind the lack of ray tracing, uh, then that's definitely feasible on this. Enabling RTX with DLSS dragged it back down to 44 frames a second, a little bit subpar again. But what this confirmed to me was that DLSS can compensate for any negative effects that you get from the ray tracing. Lastly, I got a bit silly and tried 4K. This was completely not playable and I don't recommend it, but just purely to benchmark it and to see what the difference was. On the GTX 1080, my machine coughed and spluttered a pathetic 11 frames a second. Swapping out to the 3060 managed to up that to around 20 frames a second, still obviously unplayable. Turning on DLSSS managed to double this to 40 frames a second, and that's nice, but still somewhat unplayable. And enabling RTX with DLSSS at 4K to compensate, uh, push that back down again as expected to around 22 FPS. So obviously completely no good for 4K gaming. My conclusion for Cyberpunk 2077, at least, is that visually the resolution bump to 1440p was well worth it. Although it doesn't sound like a massive increase in resolution, it's actually 78% more pixels, uh, more detail. As expected, ray tracing also made a huge difference, uh, visually at least. In a game like this where the dark, gritty ambience has plenty of opportunities for reflecting the neon cityscape. but maxing out ray tracing at 4040p was just too much of a performance hit. So medium RTX, I felt, was a good compromise. I can also conclude that the DLSSS 2.0 is genuinely magic. So I left it on on the automatic settings and turned down a couple of other features which were nearly all on high ultra. Uh, and in the end, this left me with a consistent 60 frames a second, which I'm more than happy with. So should you buy the iGame Ultra W overclock? Let's face it, you're not buying the 3060 because you want to top the performance charts and play on 4K ultra settings. 
that's not happening. You're buying the 3060 because you want the benefits of DLSS 2.0, you want ray tracing and the 30 series ampere architecture. While its RRP is 17% less than the TI edition, you're getting about 25% less raw power from the CUDA ray tracing and tensor cores. Ultimately, you're buying the 3060 because it's probably one of the few 30 series cards you can actually buy. Hopefully with the crippling of crypto algorithms mining on this, uh, supplies will be better, but more generally speaking, there is a chip shortage at the moment, just across the board. Also, if you haven't considered Colourful and the iGame brand as a viable card maker before, because for me, honestly, they were a little bit unknown, uh, then you absolutely should. Good quality stuff with a good factory overclock for those of us who don't like fiddling ourselves. But VR users beware, because as yet, Nvidia hasn't figured out what's wrong with these cards for VR or any of the other 30 series cards, in fact, in some setups. Not all setups, some people are having great performance in VR, some aren't, and it's probably not worth the risk if you're spending um, three, five thousand dollars or more on a 30 series card. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope this video has proved useful for you to show you how the 3060 performs and how far you can push it in Cyberpunk 2077. If you did appreciate it, please hit like and consider subscribing for more reviews, news, gadget giveaways, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time.